Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys in California. Before I begin, begin of all praise, it's the most high Yahweh. Acknowledgement to earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the most high bless this lesson this evening. Gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand if it's a currently happen on the earth so we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth we're going to be getting more proof right now that the prophecies most of them have already come to pass the ones written in the scriptures we are on the verge of the grand finale the revealing of who we are to the whole world, as well as who your religious institutions are as well. It's all about where you put your faith. Who do you put your faith in that's being exposed right now? The Most High just showed me how all these churches are all confederate with hiding the fact that the Catholic Church and the Christian churches have been have already fulfilled the prophecies of the Bible. It's going to be just painfully obvious. If you really look, you can see how all of these different organizations are working together to conceal their, their actions against the Israelites. That's why, you know, you keep looking at the news, you keep looking at your feed, and every day it's the same stories and about how there's a Russia's got this red line. And if America does this, they're going to do that. And nothing ever happens. China's going to do this and no, nothing happens because they are all confederate. They've been confederate this whole time with our destruction. Sitting on the sidelines, watching what's happening to us, reaping the benefits of our destruction. This is what happens when you take another people's, you know, sacred documents and try to apply them to the whole world. Eventually, those lies are going to be exposed. The lie of that the Bible is a universal book and it's dealing with everyone, it's going to be exposed at the end. Because it's going to get to a point where you can't hide that fact anymore. You won't be able to hide the fact that that Bible wasn't talking about your church. Even though the churches have tried their best to interject themselves into the book and everything else, ultimately at the end, it's going to be obvious to everyone that that was nothing but a bunch of lies and that the Bible was always talking about the Most High's chosen people. And now that the Most High has awakened us and he's raising us back up, you, it's, it's making the other nations and their religious organizations you know, it's really just exposing them and exposing their lies and exposing their tactics. And it's just so deep how, you know, how this all goes, okay? Now, I'm going to show you a couple things. And like I said, I can tell people that, yes, you can say, well, it wasn't all the churches. Yes, it's all the churches. Because the ch all of them, not one of them is telling you who the real Israelites are. None of them are telling you that the end days, the Most High's people are going to wake up in the lands of their captivities. None of them are telling you that there's going to be other books released at the end and that the wise are going to be able to read them and understand them. And that the wise are going to be able to lead us to the Most High. None of the churches are telling you that. They're still pushing the same things they've always pushed. And, you know, one thing that I always remember is about few years ago, when society got shut down, the churches really got exposed. These Constantine Christians, when the world got shut down, said nothing about nothing. Because they realized, everyone realized that they had no power over anything. They had no power over absolutely anything. So they were very quiet when society worldwide got shut down a few years ago. But see, now that, you know, 
things have opened back up. Now they want to come back and, and say certain things as if somehow they have some type of authority. When the Most High has already exposed the fact that they have no authority over absolutely anything. They have no power over anything. Even though we can tell you, we can show you about 1619, 2019, 400 years of us going through captivity. Our Hebrew New Year, March 2020, was the exact date that the world was shut down. And it was just like a watershed moment. Where most high, you know, we weren't going into those churches anymore and giving them our prayers. We were not giving them the, par- the prayers on those ley lines. See, all those churches, you know, they, they made us go into them and, and pray in them because they need us to go into those buildings and pray. Because we activate those ley lines. You know, I said, that's where we would go and get healing and get understanding and, you know, and things like that. And they needed us still to go in there. That's why they they would never let us leave. They would always make us stay. They would always be forcing us to go into their churches. And that's exactly what they were doing here when they got elevated, when they elevated their church. They didn't want us to leave. They just wanted us to convert to their religion and still go to these, you know, to these churches and these that are set up on these ley lines and give them power. That's why they need our prayers so much. And they need us in those churches because the Most High doesn't hear them. The Most High does not hear sinners, but he does hear his people. That's why it's always uh, pushed on us to pray for our enemies. Yes, when bad things happen to us, what do our pastors say? Oh, you need to go to, you need to forgive. You need to come to the church. You need to pray because they, they need those prayers. Well, let's take a look real fast at a couple of things just to show you that, look, there's only two churches, the Church of the Most High and the Church of the Adversary. That's it. That is it. There's no, there's no middle ground. There's sheep and goats. That's it. So now you need to figure out who you're going to align yourself with. Are you going to align yourself with the sheep or the goats? This is where that study to show thyself approved is very necessary. It's imperative at this point. There's nothing more important than you studying and looking into these things for yourself. Okay? Now check it out. Just to show you who this church has been an enemy of. Okay? It says, in Italy, Pope John the 23rd declared himself an enemy to the Jews. Now these are the Leaders of the Catholic Church. And they're letting the world know. See, they were proud when they were in their blessing. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an enemy of the Jews. Yeah, you can be all that when we're under our curses. That elevates them. If you go into the Book of Mormon, it talks about how the whole world, I want to say it's uh, Nephi, First Nephi 13, you can read it for yourself. The whole world gives praise Okay, to the abominable church because they took down the Israelites. Okay, now let me see if I can find it really fast. I have one. Check it real quick. But that's exactly what is happening right here. Okay. I'm going to pull it up real quick on my phone. First Nephi, uh, chapter 13. Let me see here. It's talking about this abominable church. Okay, it says, uh, and it came to oh, sorry, one, and it came to pass that the angel spake unto me, saying, Look, and I looked and beheld many nations and kingdoms. And the angel said unto me, What beheldest, uh, beholdest thou? And I said, I behold many nations and kingdoms. And he said unto me, These are the nations and kingdoms of the Gentiles. And it came to pass that I saw among the nations of the Gentiles. The formation of a great church. And that's what you're seeing right here. Okay? Verse 5. And remember now, this is First Nephi 13 and 5. This is why they tell you, that's why they put this thing about black skin as a curse to keep you out of these books. All you got to hear is that, and all of a sudden, I'm not going to read this book anymore. Okay. Oh, well, you don't read it, but that's okay. We'll read it because we can we can see what the BS is, and we can skip all that, and we can keep on reading for everything else that's important that's in here. Verse 5. And the angel said unto me, Behold the formation of a church which is most abominable above all churches, 
which slayeth the saints of God, yea, and tortureth them, and bindeth them down, and yoketh them with a yoke of iron, and bringeth them down into captivity. This is what is your abominable church. This is what they did to the Most High's people. What does it say? In Italy, Pope John XXIII declared himself an enemy to the Jews and persecuted them severely. And as the vicar of Jesus Christ, the Lord of souls and supreme governor of the world, decreed they should be converted to the Christian faith. Okay? It says he also sent letters into Spain requiring them to labor at the conversion of the Jews. Okay, and accordingly, uh, the regency of that kingdom converted a prodigious number of them. But those who would not enter into the way of salvation were either burnt alive or compelled to fly, uh, flee the country. Okay, it says two of the popes, Pius V and Sixtus V, banished them out of the ecclesiastical dominions except Rome. And we'll read about this more later on. But these popes are declaring themselves enemies of the Jews. And you go over again, 1 Nephi 13 and 5. And the angel said unto me, Behold, the formation of a church, which is most abominable above all other churches, which slayeth the saints of God, yea, and tortureth them, and bindeth them down, and yoketh them with a yoke of iron, and bringeth them down into captivity. Okay? And it came to pass that I beheld this great and abominable church, and I saw the devil, that he was the founder of it. Okay, now, of course, they're going to say, Oh, Man, this is going to happen in the future. Don't worry about what we've done. We haven't done anything. It's all about love over here. We're all about love and getting along with everybody. We're all equal. God loves us all. That's what they say now. But when they, when they first got their blessing and got control over us, this, these are the things that they were really doing. Now, you're trying to tell me that this is not prophecy. It fits this verbatim pretty much. Exactly. Okay. And it says, uh, verse 7, And I uh, also saw gold and silver and silks and scarlets and fine twine linen and all manner of precious clothing. And I saw many harlots. There's your other churches. There's your other denominations. We're not Catholic. Oh, no, no, no. I'm like, yes, you are. Because you guys are all working together to obliterate the knowledge of Israel. You're all enemies to the Most High's chosen people. The ones that fit the curses of the Bible. You're all confederate with denying who they are. You're all confederate with denying the things that we've gone through. But it doesn't matter because the Most High is now fulfilling prophecy in front of your face and none of the things that you're saying are coming to pass. Okay? Let's see here. And verse 8, And the angel spake unto me, Behold, the gold and the silver, and the silks, and the scarlets, and the fine twine linen, and the precious clothing, and the harlots are the desires of this great and abominable church. And also, here it is, this is the main part, and also for the praise of the world do they destroy the saints of God and bring them down into captivity. The whole world, that's why they all go to these Christian churches and Catholic churches. Because they're all praising the churches, these churches, and the harlots for bringing down the Israelites. Hey, but I, I thought the uh, and you know the Inquisition was going after witches and warlocks. No, he's telling you right here who he's going after. In Italy, Pope John the Twenty Third declared himself an enemy to the Jews and persecuted them severely. And it was just Pope after Pope after Pope, and they said they were the vicar of Christ and they were the God's representatives here on earth and da da da. Right. But see, now all of a sudden, they're like, oh, no, we're not the vicars of Christ. Oh, no, no, no. Because, see, they've lost their blessing. See, that was the authority that they destroyed us at first, calling themselves the vicar of Christ. Because they were feeling themselves at that time, and they knew that they had the blessing. Now they know that blessing's gone away. Now, all of a sudden, Pope Francis is like, oh, no, I'm not the vicar of Christ. Oh, no, that's, I don't want that title. Oh, no, 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 no. You ain't getting away, you ain't getting away from it that easy. All my brethren are under that altar asking those high for recompense every day, all the time. So again, 
First nine. This is First Nephi 13 9, if you want to look it up yourself. And also for the praise of the world, do they destroy the saints of God and bring them down into captivity. Okay? Now, let's continue. I want you to see this part right here. Now we're going to get into this book again. The history of the Moranos. Now, I'm telling you, man, there's so much information here. So this is what happens when, like I said, they're not, they don't want you to read any of this. That's why your Bible stops at 70 AD. And there's nothing. They're, they they had, when the Greeks came into power, they're hiding the things that the Romans were doing after Yahawashai died. All those hundreds of years of persecution of the Israelites, they're hiding. Or they call them something different. They call them witches and warlocks and everything else. And you got people who said they were in the truth, but they just pretty much espouse the exact same doctrine of end times prophecies as these churches. Oh man, Jacob's trouble's coming. Here comes Jacob's trouble. Oh, you're going to have to take the mark. I'm like, haven't we already been going through? Oh, no, no, no. It's coming in the future. Haven't we already been going through Jacob's trouble? No, no, no. It's coming in the future. You see what I'm saying? They're still put. They're still protecting the churches. They're still protecting that history. They're still all of them are working together to hide the things they've done to the Israelites. Check this out. Here at the bottom, talking about our foods. Okay, now what they did was they they're working hard to cut us off from our power. They're working hard to cut us off from our traditions and the ways that we would please the Most High. That's what they were doing. Check this out. Of the ceremonial Jewish rite, the most characteristic are those connected with food. And this, too, some of the Moranos of the first generation were meticulous, okay, a shoshet, or ritual slaughter being occasionally found continuing his activities, although baptized. Okay, detailed observance in so public a matter would have been equivalent to suicide at a later period. These people are just killing you. You do any of your traditions, it's a game, set, match. You're done. But this is a loving religion, though, right? Okay, this isn't prophecy of the Most High, you know, these people cutting us off from our heritage, right? The flesh of the unclean beast mentioned in the Mosaic Code could indeed, uh, says, could indeed be omitted from the diet without too much difficulty. Hence, the Inquisition was always, especially on watch, for such as abstained from pork, rabbit, and scaleless fish. Now, now you're gonna know why they kept, they they took out Maccabees, because there's a whole story in there about a woman and her children being slaughtered and killed in front of her because they refused to eat pork. They refuse to eat unclean animals. They're like, oh, we don't want people realizing that that's what the Greeks were doing, that they were forcing them to, <clears throat> to, to walk away from their traditions, walk away from their commandments. We don't want that. So therefore, now the book of books of Maccabees are not canonized. They're not good. Got to find a way to hide that. You see what I'm saying? This is why these books are hidden, because they expose the fact that these Groups that have been elevated to such high positions have actually been fulfilling prophecy by destroying the Israelites. So again, hence the, Inqu and the Inquisition was always, especially on watch for such as abstain from pork, rabbit, and scaleless fish. So now I can't even eat what I want. Now if I do that, I can get killed for that too. Okay. Yielding to circumstances, however, the Murano had to abandon the idea of procuring food killed in the Jewish manner. One or two things remain possible. In the Bible, he could read, see, hold on real fast, I'm gonna show you this. How the children of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh. And it was customary accordingly, whenever it could be done without suspicion to porridge the leg before preparing it for food. Moreover, when chickens were killed at home, their heads were chopped off instead of their necks being wrung, okay? Let's see here. A prayer even existed to be recited before killing animals for food. And it was kind of crazy because if you think of the movie Avatar, when Jake was getting uh, taught by the princess, he had made a kill and then he was like, kind of like saying like a prayer before he ended up uh, killing the animal. He shot it with like an arrow 
the animal was dying. And he kind of like said like a prayer and then he killed it. Just kind of like the same things that the Israelites do because those people, the natives in that movie of Avatar were pretty much representing the Israelites. Okay, same thing. Let's see. A prayer even existed to be recited before killing animals for food. In over meticulous conformity with the Levitical ordinance, the Maranos refused to touch any animal fat, hence, they were forced to utilize oil only in cooking. This coming to be recognized as one of the regular practices of Judaism. All meat was regularly washed in order to remove every trace of blood. From pork, the Maranos of the earlier generations would try to abstain. <clears throat> going so far as to destroy any dish in which it had been inadvertently prepared, okay, and telling their children that those who ate pork would be turned into pigs. The intense suspicion attaching to this coupled with the fact that in a large part of the peninsula, the flesh of the pig in some form or other is the staple food of the majority of the population, ultimately made rigid observance in this respect impossible, just like today. You know, you go to certain fast food restaurants, it's almost all bacon, sausage, all kinds of pork for everything. Because they want you, it's more so aimed at us. Same things were going on back then, same things going on right now. Because they don't want, they, they're, we're trying, they're wanting us to be tainted and separated from our power. Okay? So let's see here. Yet for all this, the regulations concerning it did not entirely disappear though forced to contaminate themselves with impure food for the major, major part of the year, the Muranos refused to do so on any occasion of a special sanctity. Thus, it became customary with them to abstain from pork, at least on Sabbaths and during the periods leading up to the Passover and to the Day of Atonement, while they avoided eating any meat during the seven days of mourning upon the death of a parent. Okay? And immediately before or after any fast. Okay. Let's skip on down. About the Sabbath, right? Okay. The difference between Judaism and Christianity consisted principally according to the doctrine of Antonio Homan in the uh, two questions of the worship of images and the observance of the Sabbath. The latter continued to be one of the main cares of the Inquisition. To abstain from ordinary occupations on Saturday was an obvious indication of guilt. Okay? So that means they just kill you. If you just tried not to do any work on a Saturday and they found out you were doing that, you could be killed. You could be tortured and killed. This is what's going on. This is why I said that that Pope was the enemy of the Jews. So he was not allowing them to follow their traditions because he was trying to cut us off from our power. But you don't think this is somehow prophecy? That all, yes, this is why they're all talking about an Antichrist coming and you getting raptured away because they're trying to hide the fact that they've already fulfilled these prophecies. They've already destroyed the Most High's chosen people. They've already gotten their payment and their blessing for destroying us. So nevertheless, food was prepared as far as possible on the previous day, and Marano ladies would sit idle before their spinning wheels, taking up their work only when a stranger appeared. See, they're having to kind of fake it. You see what I'm saying? It was usual to make a point of changing linen on Friday night, though the imprudence might bring a man to the stake. You see that? I mean, you can get killed for just doing any of your traditions. This indeed figured foremost among the charges, which cost the illustrious Antonio uh, Jose da Silva his life. In the circumstances, observance became more and more difficult. It was clung to, nevertheless, with pathetic eagerness. Angela Nunez at Toledo uh, in 18, 1680 admitted that in spite of all her efforts, she had been unable to keep more than 15 Sabbaths in 20 years. Regular meetings for prayer on Saturdays were obviously dangerous. They were, held, uh, however, held as far as possible in the months before the Passover and the Day of Atonement. This is prophecy. See, you've taken a Bible that was talking about a group, particular group of people. Talking about the things that they were going to go through. The destruction they were going to go go through. How they were going to lose everything. Their knowledge, understanding, their money 
their standing, everything. But at the end days, the Most High is going to send the Holy Spirit, and she's going to raise them back up and give them knowledge and understanding once again. That's what the Bible's talking about. Not about Russia and China and Ukraine and this and that. Not about America going down because of abortion. <laughs> And all these things, you know, oh, we lost our way. We were such a godly nation before we lost our way. We had prayer in schools. And also it says in the Bible, he doesn't, he doesn't listen to the prayers of sinners. So it didn't matter. If you, if you weren't following the ways of the Most High, you're not following the, the rules that he's ordained for us, then how, why would he be listening to your prayers? You see what I'm saying? And the Most High, you know, he knew that we were going to be cut off from him. But see, that's why, like, when you get people on the comment board saying, well, you didn't circumcise, you, were you circumcised on the eighth day? Oh, if you weren't doing that, then, you know, you're not, you're not, you're, you're out of, you're out of the covenant. You're not, <clears throat> I'm like, look, the Most High already talks about how he already knew that these people were going to be doing these things. And he gave them leeway. Just like I'm going to say, in the book, I was talking about, like, circumcision. And, like, when the, when the Israelites were um, wandering the desert after they left Egypt for 40 years, Right. That they weren't circumcising their kids, but the Most High knew that. And he gave them leeway because he knew that they weren't able to perform all the, you know, the rites and the traditions that they would usually be able to do. He knows these things just like today. That's why when they ask, oh, do you, do you know Hebrew? Do you know this? Can you do that? You're not holding this. You're not doing this right. We're not supposed to be because you've taken everything away from us. And you're rolling with these prophecies that are, it very, you know, it's very obvious that they're not coming to pass. So now, what are you going to do? Now, all these people that are going through and talking about, you know, an Antichrist coming in the future, you're just being complicit with hiding what your churches have done in the past. All of you. This is why the, the Most High said in Jeremiah 16, 19, all the Gentiles are going to come up to the Most High and say that our fathers have inherited lies. Now you're seeing the lies. The lies are to hide what they were doing to the Israelites. Is it not obvious? And now the Most High, who's being fair, is letting you see this truth and start to bless the true people of the Most High. You're getting your opportunity to hear this truth and make changes. But it's ultimately up to you. Don't believe me. Go and study it out for yourself. You're not going to get any alternative from any church. As much as they want to 